Hello, I'm Robert, fact checker and science blogger, and welcome to my channel. So this is just about one of these other totally harmless asteroids, 2009 JF1. It's only 13 meters in diameter. That's very small for an asteroid that would just burn up in the atmosphere almost certainly. Unless it's a rare iron meteorite, and then it would just make a very small crater or a splosh in the ocean. And yet you could I get we're getting quite a few people contacting that with us and say, does this mean the world is going to end because of this asteroid? Okay, that's a, that's a sensationalist pest for you. There's never been hasn't been any NASA asteroid warning about any asteroid, and yet the Daily Express and people like that claim that NASA has said the world's going to end because of this tiny harmless asteroid that is just big enough to be a very bright fireball. So. And that, that just goes on and on and on. If, if we just have to debunk so many completely false asteroid warnings. Over and over and over we have to do that. They said they, they made a typo or something. They said it would be 130 metres across. That still wouldn't be big enough for global effects, even if their, their, their typo was correct. That would be big enough for a crater perhaps a kilometre across and blow up grass most of a small country like Belgium if it was as big as 130 metres, which it isn't. Uh, but we would know about something like that in advance. Um, for, you know, if we knew, sorry, if we knew something like that in advance, even just a week in advance, even suppose something was headed for Belgium, there'd be a huge panic and everybody would evacuate Belgium because they didn't want their windows blown out, or they would at least step away from the windows. And so you know they they know uh, not not to not to to cover themselves on that particular moment. They know the exact second second they was going to hit the Earth's atmosphere. So uh, we, we would, uh, if there was an asteroid headed our way, it wouldn't be like in the movies. There wouldn't be people running around in New York City and great big waves and things like that. They would be watching if it was an asteroid headed for New York City. And they, would, and they knew about it in advance, which they usually do in the... I mean, there'd be no point... Be very, it would be a very short uh, disaster movie if the movie was just an asteroid hit and they didn't have any warning. So they always know about it in advance. And yet somehow they're still in the cities running around when this asteroid is about to hit. That would never happen in real life. Because uh, it's, that would be like people staying behind when they know that there's a hurricane coming. They would be watching it from the distance. It would have taken away all their uh, precious things as well. And, uh, and done what they can to secure the city in that very remote chance. But the very most likely kind of asteroid impact, and we're not going to, not very likely to have a big feature film about it, a big feature movie about it, but most of the Earth's uh, surface is sea. The most, as most asteroids are very small. The much more of the small ones than there are of the big ones. So most likely future asteroid warning is something like a tiny asteroid about to splash in the Pacific. And then astro astronomers, so I did this like breaking news. So you can imagine this appearing on BBC, I mean the United Kingdom, and there'd be experts on there saying a tiny asteroid is going to splash in the Pacific. It's going to send a, a big waves up a height of about a couple of hundred metres. And we're going to charter a jet see the splash from the air. That is statistically by far the most likely warning that we would have of an asteroid, an asteroid about to hit Earth, because most of the Earth is sea, and because there are far more small asteroids than big ones. So obviously there have been many asteroids like that splashed in the sea in the past, but nobody noticed, because there's so much sea and I mean, if you ever say the saw a splashing asteroid, they wouldn't know what it was if you go back a few centuries. But that's, that's by far the most likely thing to happen. So, um, anyway, this asteroid would not even be big enough for that. 2009 JF1 would not be able to create a splash in the ocean. It would burn up in the atmosphere before it hit the ocean and just be a few pebbles fall down into the sea. So there's nothing here to worry about at all.
just took me on this asteroid. And so if you want to, I've got a couple of links here. You can go visit NASA, NASA Asteroid Watch. And you can be sure if there ever was an asteroid that was a really uh, significant warning, it'd be at the top of the page. When they have these little asteroids predicted, they say it's just going to fly past. Then they, they, they have that, they post about it there. So just go, go there and you'll find out or anything you might want to know and far more than you want to know about whatever the most recent asteroid news is. And you won't find anything there about asteroid warnings. There's never been an asteroid warning there. So I, I brought it up. I didn't mean to do that. Let's just see what's here we come. Coming up in a new window. Let's, let's just see, see what's in the asteroid watch page. And there, there we are. Um, there's 1,546 new Earth asteroid discoveries in 2020. Um, those are the, that's the Catalina Sky Survey, that's one of several sky surveys that are constantly looking at the night sky. Um, and so those, those are as asteroids that won't hit Earth because or that uh, um, mo most of them would be uh, just immediately eliminated that they can't hit up and a few remain in the table but it's usually I mean, it's usually less than a thousand in the table left and then we keep a track of those and many of them very small some are larger ones and then the, they keep a track of them and I'll, I'll try bring that up in a moment um, and there we are uh, the news about returning the sum of the uh, asteroid to Earth and here is a uh, tracked a small Earth asteroid, 2020 XK1, as it safely passed by on December the 7th. So that's the news. There's nothing there about this JF1 thing, because it's just not a risk. Not a not, not significant risk, because it's, it's absolutely tiny and it's expected to miss in 2020. And this is my... Uh, still coming up? Are you going? So that's that. This, oh, this, this is my page for 2009 JF1, and uh, there's data about it. So you can enter any asteroid name in there and find out about it. And so that's the thing about it. The only data you could hit then, but the odds against the hit are 3,900 to one. So this is and this is the asteroid table. This is the table, and you can see a uh, no hazard. It's, uh, that's probably why they ran a story about it it's top of the list but it's top of the list is zero habit has no asset so um, and then you, you can go and look at the uh, see if there ever was a warning I could just fill it with randomized warnings it's not a real warning this is just a uh, testing it ah so there we are so I've just randomly pretended that it's something there we are that's more like that so if you got a real warning then you'd have something like that they would say this page would then say ah oh, this is a, a certain to hit and it's a dangerous thing it isn't at all that just me randomized my randomized warning if you go back to the actual data then that's that's what you randomized there with the actual data it's no hazard the, the, the no warnings the highest any has ever got is yellow which is of interest to astronomers it's never got to the point where it We've never had anything that has reached a level where it's of interest to the general public. And so this, this is my non-techie interface for the actual table. Uh, the, and that's, if you click on the techie numbers there, you can see the actual table. So uh, here we are. That's said you, you, you can see, it's actually, this, this is just the same things. Because you can see it's far more techy, and the people I help just can't read that. You look at that, they have no idea what all that means. This zero here is the most important thing. Zero means no hazard. But it's because of the way astronomers think and mathematicians think. And it's much simpler to just write a zero in every column rather than to write no hazard in every column. So, because they're mathematical minds, you know, and a zero is a much makes much more sense to them 
nothing to write the words no hazard over and over and over again. And that's what that means. Zero, zero, zero means no, no hazard. So that's what I've done there. I just, I just put, change it, that's a zero. I changed it to no hazard. I've moved some of the columns that are of no, you know, of no interest. I've got, you can show the dates there if you like, but I leave out the dates because people get scared of dates. But these dates are dates when it's, there's no hazard because at that present, it's just not reached the level of being a risk that, that you need to think about. So anyway, that's, so that's absolutely nothing to worry about at all. Just a tiny asteroid, no hazard and nothing to worry about. Uh, so I'll upload this, hopefully it's helped some of you who've got scared about 2009 JF1 or any of these other ones. Oh, oh yes, and, and then, so I mean I've already done these ones before. There's, um, what have I got down here? Yeah, about being, no, oh I haven't done that. So I will just add one, that it, uh, another one I need to add there is about how the uh, that, that the risk of asteroids is so low the big risk big asteroids is just about eliminated and then of the small ones then your level of risk is far less than that of lightning it's actually less even than the very rare far less than the risk of the very rare risk of dying of a very large hailstone which is an unusual and rare death and your risk for an asteroid is much less even than that. So it really is not something to worry about. Right, so I'll upload this. Hopefully, help some of you scared of this asteroid. <laughs>